an MBX squad out there. Uh, this video today uh, is long overdue. I'm gonna finally go over the GARP 2.0, uh, some mounting instructions, because it's slightly different from the 1.0 um, video that's out there currently. So uh, here's the updated version. Okay, we're gonna start out with our two straps. Okay, you'll pick one. So the main difference between the old strap and the new strap is the new straps no longer have the buckles on them. Okay, they are now on the bag itself. And so the reason for this is that um, <clears throat> these are just held in place by a three bar slide so that if the, uh, the strap itself fails or the buckle fails, um, then it's easy to replace the buckle and you don't have to replace the whole bag. You can just tie in a new buckle or a new piece of strap. So first we're gonna mount the strap to the tire in uh, crisscross fashion. So there's one thing to take note of here and that is you wanna make sure, but like if it's mounted, for example, the opposite way, you cannot, you know, then it will 100% rip this. So like this is what happened. Maybe you've seen the video, um, Scouting New Territory where uh, Allison's bag failed. That's because he had it actually mounted this way. So this was around the tire and then the strap itself, if it's gonna focus in on my hand here, was pulling down on the weight, which obviously pulled on the strap. So it's important that this is this way and the weight pulls on, pulls on it this way, you know, along with the strap itself. And it's perfectly fine. It's gonna hold a lot of weight that way. This is, a, this is a 37 inch tire, and as you can see, it's got no, no problem fitting around that. I, I mean, uh, if, you re, if you email me and you're going to request a special uh, size, say you have a 40 inch tire or a 38, a 38, I can accommodate and I can send you a longer uh, strap, but the, uh, the regular ones that I made for the, uh, the generic or for the regular bag is uh, for 37 max. So these don't, these don't have to be extra tight either. They can be somewhat loose. The weight is pulling on them uh, on opposite sides from the bag itself. So it doesn't really matter that these are not under full tension in the front. So then what you do is you're gonna take your, your bag, your pigtails, and simply just, you can wedge it or you can hold it with the other, the wrist, or you can sling it over your wrist if you want. If you want. Just to hold it in place, you free your hands up, hold it in place, and feed this through. So I'll do it to the back if you, if you want, if you can. And then you take the ex excess flap and fold it back over onto the, uh, the buckle itself and through this little loop right here. And you repeat the process on both sides. Okay, and then you move on to the bottom. Exactly the same. Like I said, all the tension comes from uh, securing it on the bottom part. And always feed the, the flap back over the buckle itself. And that way it's secure, there's nothing flopping around and it's nice and tight. So now your bag is completely secure and very, very tight. Even though the straps behind it are actually fairly loose. Right. So the weight, the pressure comes, on, comes from the back of the, of the tire and the, the bag itself. Okay, so for an overview, um, the buckles are, are now one and a half inch 
as opposed to the one inch ones. Uh, some of them will come in two inch ones and that's just because of what's available. Sometimes the mill spec ones are two inch. The top ones, so you have a very big zipper on the very top here, which runs all the way across. Typically I keep uh, some, fire, some fire starter uh, in here or uh, and spare garbage bags to replace your old ones with. Velcro to put whatever plus pads you have or if you want to get these MBX patches they are available on the site. And uh, the biggest thing right now is inside the lid. The lid is different. So the old one had uh, two very floppy straps hanging down here, which were for uh, carrying a bundle of wood, for example. Uh, this one doesn't. Everything inside here is neat. I'll take a look at this. And so the purpose behind uh, these straps here, which are held in, by, in place by a little Velcro tab, to release them. Now you can have, you can still put a bundle of wood in there if you want. It will still serve that purpose as well. It is designed to hold traction boards, which I'll show you in a second. Um, camping chairs, anything like that will work. So you just have to, now, whatever you strap in here will actually attach to the lid. So whenever you open your bag up, this moves out of the, out of the way with it, as opposed to still having it here and then flopping it over as well, or having it come falling down, uh, whatever the case may be. So I'll give a quick demo on the traction boards and what that looks like. Place the board, you just slide it in. Like this. And you strap it down. Now you have your board securely secured in your garage. And so because of the knobs on the board itself, there will be enough to retain, uh, to retain the, uh, the board uh, to the straps. So this is not very likely to just come out on the trail. It never has for me. Um, even when I was just strapped behind the bag itself, like I did before. Um, this way, again, like you have... Sorry, I closed the buckles. This way you can just pop it out of the way and still have your garb open the whole time you're at camp and using it as you just flip over the, the, uh, the lid. So for the bag itself, we get your bags. Okay, your standard garbage bag. Pop them in, and now you just take the upper edges, and uh, you take the clip, you take the bag, you wedge it between, and you clamp down on it, just like that. So you take, here's your clip, you wedge the bag between, and you close it up, just like that. So you do that all around, then your bag are gonna, are gonna be retained, and when you're done, all you do is lift it up, and you take your bag out. There's no need to rip or tear or undo any sort of knots or have any other sort of um, creative mechanism. You just have these little tabs on top and it goes to both sides. As you can see as well, are now uh, divided. So we do have a divider in there. A divider right here for the garbage and recycling or if you wish to store other items in here, maybe your, your recovery ropes, your whatever else, maybe you a bucket or a jerry can or bottles of water, whatever. Uh, it is designed for a second garbage bag or a recycling bag. Um, so it has that in place. It is completely removable. So if you do want to uh, not use it, it has Velcro on one side. So that you just put it out of the way. And now you have a full compartment uh, for if you want to use it for a different purpose. So it doesn't come out completely, it's attached to one side, the other side is velcroed in. Uh, so this will still give you the same flexibility and you're not going to lose your piece. I like to have them both in. Next up, so the Gara 2.0 now has molly panels on the side as well, so you can attach um, whatever you want to them. Shackles is a common thing to attach to them. 
or uh, pouches or whatever else uh, that is with Molly. Put zap straps in there, put uh, tools, whatever. Uh, eventually, I'm, I am going to make pockets specific for this bag that are designed for the right size and the right shape. Maybe like a shovel mount or something I'm thinking about making to kind of attach to it. Um, and then you have on the front two separate uh, compartments, uh, pouches that are basically for whatever you want. Th these will hold uh, two side by side uh, 10 pound per paint tanks. Let me just demonstrate. So that's kind of what these are designed for. And that's why they are, they are the size that they are. Okay. Now you get two of these. So you can carry easily carry four of those for paint tanks on the outside. You're the, no worries about keeping them inside of a hot vehicle uh, or whatever else. They're on the outside and they're safe and they're secure to in your guard. Obviously, it's got drain, it's got drain holes uh, for water in every pocket and every main compartment, just like the previous version. And um, yeah, I guess that sums up the overview of the Garb 2.0. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, just put them down in the comment down below and I will address them. And uh, hopefully this will help you out uh, with any um, questions you might have when it comes to how to mount your Garb 2.0.